Welcome to my website and my name is Eric Bolin and I help people recover from debting. This is a great tool, the debtor slide and the steps to recovery. We start by living from paycheck to paycheck, which seems common enough. We may do some comfort spending, cash flow. We're not looking at what's coming in or what's going out. This produces some financial guilt. We feel a little bit more guilty than other people when it comes to money. We may start to use credit cards to solve money problems. We don't think this is unusual because our society is actually encouraging it. We struggle with vagueness and denial regarding our finances. We want to be unaware. Just like many other addictions, we can't even discuss that there is a problem with anybody who is concerned. With any compulsive behavior or addiction, there is this resentment that we feel like life is not treating us right. We feel fearful, we feel gypped, and we develop resentment which is behind our sense of wanting to go spend. We may have fantasies of being bailed out. We may feel that God or another person or our parents or our brother or sister um, is going to bail us out of the mess we've created. Sometimes we bail ourselves out by working harder and longer to support our, not only our spending habit but to try to pay off our own debt and kind of solve this by ourselves. We have a feeling of entitlement to um, our spending because we work so hard. Like any compulsion or addiction, we spend to feel better. We spend when we're bored, when we're tired, when we're angry, when we're lonely. It gives us a pick-me-up. We may actually have inner deep promises and resolutions to pay off our debts and yet fail to do so. And this may cycle for years. We may begin to have late payments, NSF fees, and collections. At this point, our thinking is impaired. We're not thinking realistically or rationally about this because of the, the shame we experience. As we move from the critical phase downward to the chronic phase, it really begins to affect our sleep. We begin to worry. We begin to continue just to think about our problems around money. At this point, we have loss of willpower like any addiction. We know what to do, whether it's writing um, our transactions down or stop spending, but we just can't stop. We may develop physical illness where then we begin to have medical bills and we feel like, gee, and it's from not only the chronic worry, but also the working. We have obsessional thinking where we can't stop our thinking. This may be worry or even just thinking about buying something. Compulsive debtors and under earners go from uh, spending sprees where they um, spend all this money to actually then depriving themselves of the very necessities of life. They suffer from anxiety, panic, and depression, and it's hard to know, is it caused by the compulsive spending or is it the anxiety, panic, and depression that cause some of the spending for temporary relief? We begin to get relief just by borrowing more money to satisfy the debts that we have, but again, you really can't solve, put out a fire with more fire. We may have bankruptcies, and we may be in denial about our addiction because we think, well, I haven't had a bank bankruptcy yet, but there are people that end up with bankruptcy as well. We may have legal troubles. We may have trouble um, with collections. We may have borrowed from um, others, and we're, in essence, hiding from them. Many times this brings marital troubles. It's not just the debt, it's the lying, the hiding, the secrecy around it. And it is a surprise and it creates huge anxiety for family members. And here we are at the bottom in the debtor's pit, which really is a hole. It's a vicious cycle of debting, worry, working, and borrowing. And it continues on until we get hope. And there is hope for recovery. 
And the hope is based on our higher power, our belief in God, and certain steps we take towards recovery as well as people to program. A sincere desire for help is the beginning step, and this is our openness to reading about the disease of compulsive debting as well as attending some 12-step meetings. When we understand that this is a disease, then we start to look for the cure, we look for the treatment. And if we apply the treatment, then the disease begins to go into remission, if not um, to the point where we feel maybe not necessarily cured, but really well. We also begin by taking the step of not incurring any unsecured debt, just one day at a time. That this we see is one of the core reasons why we got into this trouble, so we're just not going to live in debt anymore. We begin to trust God, a higher power for our provision, rather than relying on our own addictive cycle. We get clarity and right thinking as we track all our expenditures and our money coming in. While this may seem tedious, what we're doing is really staying in touch with reality, and it's in this real thinking and, and reality that we, um, this disease dies. We gain support from others in recovery. Like I said, we track our income and our expenditures, and we do this daily. We do it either on the computer, but I think there's some real value to carrying it on paper and pen with us. Um, and of course, you can use both systems. Having a spending plan, unlike a budget, helps us to know how do we want to spend our money. It keeps us consciously aware. It's guidelines, in, in a sense, of staying on the road to recovery. As we continue to recover, we begin to see what our real needs are and what our wants are. And sometimes we've confused our needs with wants and that we've bought things we wanted but didn't necessarily need, and then we end up losing our peace. As we have the increased clarity in our life, uh, we're going to be able to make wiser decisions when it comes to money. We're taking the steps towards solvency. And we continue to follow our spending plan. We also have conscious spending at this point, rather than unconscious spending, where we spent haphazardly without really thinking clearly. When the stress begins to wane and we can start to feel more relaxed and serenity in our lives, we can start to actually have not just clear thinking, but creative thinking. This is when our highest parts of our brains are used to come up with better visions, better ways to solve financial problems, and, and better ways of generating income. We begin to connect more with family and friends. And little did we realize that our obsession with money and our worries really kept us from being with people. We continued to retire our debt one day at a time, sometimes slowly, sometimes quicker than we would have expected. Our core values begin to surface of what's important to us. When the stress of just running around trying to make ends meet is lifted, then we begin to discover who we really are and what we really want. And as we take taken better care of ourselves, then we can begin to live much more congruently. We begin to connect with our feelings because we're really not numbing ourselves with spending. As we begin to get out of the red and move into the black, and in this case we're moving into the green, we begin to build assets for ourselves. And we realize this isn't just financial assets, but our time, our, our, our talents, and, and things begin to develop. We begin to develop vision or plan for ourselves. We have a direction rather than being a slave to debt, we end up beginning to be free. And finally, we continue to grow in maturity and solvency as we continue to get even greater health than when we started. And with that, I wish you a great journey of recovery. If you need any more information, feel free to check out our website at www.ericbolin.net.